Hey, it's me. Oh man, I was set up for the drop there. Wait a second. T from the Pattersons taking a train to Tibet. Hey, I'm here at an undisclosed location. Riding out the pandemic. I don't even, I'm riding up the pandemic. It hasn't even hit its height in New York yet, so I don't know. But oh, wait a second. I'm not in full because I got some important things. South Park saying, oh, hold on. Don't go any place. I'll be right back. Hold on, hold on. Because I know you. I'm coming. I'm coming. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, let's this thing up. No, this is a very, this is very, very special commentary. Oh, very special commentary. I'm back. Okay, wait a second. I said, well, brother, I see you putting on some sort of revolutionary hat. Is that red star just to go with your red sleeve? Because you wear your heart on your sleeve. Oh, I'm sorry. That's, that was the evil on your sleeve with the Othello and the, the thing. About, never mind. Don't worry about that part. Okay. I got, I went and got some Lakewood Organic Papaya Blend, not from Concentrate. Oh, yeah. So they say. Let's see what else they say. Uh, that certified whoever. Past Pasteurized juice pressed from fresh fruit. Okay, that's good. Refrigerate after opening. Okay, so we're going to do that. This is freshness, blah, 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 blah. Freshness within two weeks after opening. Okay, I got two weeks to drink this sucker. Uh, what's it made out of? Come on, not from concentrate. How come I can't see what it's made out of? Oh, well. This papaya blend, but it's a blend, so it has to be blended with something. So, so, so. 100% fruit juice. Oh, ingredients. Organic papaya puree, organic apple juice. Papaya and apple juice. Okay. So you say, what am I going to do with this? Here's what I'm going to do with this. I'm going to get a glass. I'm going to get some of the drink out of. This is strange looking glass. It's not going to work. I don't want that one. Oh, I know what to get. Don't go any place. Now I'm going through all this stuff because... There we go. Like the old west, man. They just <laughs> the old west. We just <laughs> get, get like that. Oh, I need some ice because we're going to get it's going to be serious today. Some ice. Oh, here's some ice. Here's some ice. There we go. Okay. That make me a drink. Now, you might say, Well, brother, why do you have that, you know, communist star on? This is actually my old goon cap, but we won't get into that right now. We'll look at my other postings and figure out what that's about. So at the ice thing later. I pour a little of this fine organic papaya blend. I'm not really a big papaya juice kind of guy. However, since it's late afternoon or afternoon, sometime afternoon, I went to Svidenia. I went and got some Vodka, wherever point liters, liter, one point seven five liters, whatever it is. He said, "Well, brother, you don't really drink that stuff." Well, I don't, but I gotta, you know, mix it up a little. Then I pour some of this vodka over this papaya thing like that. Oh, I better stop. I'm not really a big spirits drinker, so this might not work out for me. Too. <laughs> might not work out too well. I mix that because later on I'm gonna have a. I'm gonna make me some. Uh, what am I gonna make? Uh, lasagna. I'm gonna make some. Uh, which, which lasagna am I gonna use? Not lasagna. I'm gonna get a little noodle. Spinach linguine or. Now I gotta do this one. Squid ink fettuccine. Squid ink. I've had squid ink before. Squid ink um, spaghetti. I like it. Black spaghetti. Look, then again, I'm stuck for anything black. Okay. Even though this ain't black. Come on. Come on. Mix up. Mix up. I don't want to be drinking all that thing. So I'm going to have that later, so I got to, you know, be ready. Okay. But look, I'm not. Forget that. This is, this, this is the me. This is the location. Okay. Here we go. Here's what I want to talk about. It's interesting because um, as, as this pandemic hits, like I like to say, what people don't understand is like they be doing this stuff all the time, you know. Just they experiment with this popular, but they usually experiment with black people. So black people, they've been going. We always on the bottom. So even when something hits, we on the bottom, bottom, bottom. But you know, a lot of a lot of us have acclimated to these kind of things. Anyway, 
When I'm looking at, let me let me give you a classic example. This is a classic example. When something hits, and and and, and because they ignore the the the, the, the downtrodden, you know what I mean? It goes from the downtrodden and eventually seeps. It and plus it's a contagion, and this contagion is moving. This sucker is moving quick, you know. Well, I live in the South Bronx. Now, right now, they call, they're, they're not the area, right down from where I live, they're in the Patterson Bronx, up there on 3rd Avenue and, and, and 149th Street. They, they call it the, the, the hub, you know. It is, it is sort of a hub. All, a lot of trains go through. Well, it's, it's a hub, you know. Um, but when we was young, we didn't call it. We just we were going up 3rd Avenue. We just said, we're going up 3rd Avenue. And that meant we was going to 149th. And we were to 149th Street, 150, whatever street. We're between Hearns and whatever that other store was up there. I forgot what the other store was. Anyway. Tasty. Tastes like papaya. I guess that's why they use vodka over there. But here's what happened. Now, now when I grew up, I grew up in a time when it's like the, 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 the late 50s, early early 60s, my formative years, if you will. And by the time it was ready for me to go into a gang in the area, right, that's when they flooded the area with drugs because they figured, hey, you got the kids on drugs. They can't be gang wong him. They can't then they can't take take that gang mentality, that gang, that warrior mentality into the the, the black consciousness that was going on in those days. You see what I'm saying? So they they they, they didn't devise they. Here's the they that devised this plan. Politicians, the mafia, and the cops. The three. Now, I experienced this. I knew this, right? But you know, sometimes you don't, you know, you you know this, you say, no, nah, you just let it go. Until this till um Ah, what's the brother's name? He used to work for the um oh man, son and all that stuff. The, the the Newsweek, uh Newsday rather, Newsday. Anyway, he wrote this book a long time ago. It came out in the seventies, I guess, because this was about to say maybe it came out in the eighties. And and it, it documented that here's what happened. These these forces, the mafia, because they were whatever, the the cops and the politicians, they allowed the area to be they, they allowed the drugs to come into that area. Yeah, up centrally to, to get rid of the gangs. But there was another hub area, because remember, South Bronx, say the South Bronx is I'm not sure you have up here, and say, well, don't say the South Bronx is up here, wherever you look at. And the Low East Side was down here. Low East Side, right, right where the, uh, the, uh, the cat I stayed with, my fraternity brother I stayed with, he he grew up in those projects down there, you know, the Eden Wall, those projects down there, you know, Avenue D kind of things, you know. But there, you had, in, in, in the South Bronx, you know, you had everything while the Major Deacon was up there. But then you can go, based from the South Bronx, you go out to Long Island, you, go to, you can go to Manhattan, you can go to, to Jersey, you can just, it's a hub, you know. It's just, you know that's where bonfires are the vanities, the guy got off wrong, whatever have you, you know. I hate that book, by the way. Anyway, anyway, uh, down low east side, you had a similar thing. Because uh, from from there, you know, you you can get you can get to the the, the tunnels, Holland Tunnel, uh, Lincoln Tunnel. Uh, what's that? The Midtown Tunnel, a little bit up a little further. Midnight, you know, you can get a lot of places. It was a hub too. Though these two places, they put drugs in, right? And because the drugs were going there, then those people who had cars, the suburbanites, the suburb suburbanites, those people, you know, the, the people wouldn't let black people into their neighborhood. That that they wouldn't lie. That the government made sure that the black people didn't, that black people couldn't go into these neighborhoods because they make. Uh, don't worry, it's another, another story for another time. Redlining, you know about it. Here's the thing, part of redlining. So what happened is the drugs just went out <laughs> into those into the suburbia. Now by the time it, they, it got to them, then they said, "Oh, we got a problem." But you created the problem. You put it in there. I don't only bring that up to say that. Uh, plus, in all these areas, so not those. Are, then we had uh, new areas, like you know, other areas where they would uh, put up some housing and say, "Oh, this is we're going to have a, some low income housing as part of the deal of whether they did with the real estate, whatever they did." Then they they had like garbage dumps under all kinds of things, you know. Um, I don't know, waste, whatever. This is nationwide. Now you got, you know, you got all kinds of low level intensity radiation from all, all kinds of all kinds of stuff happening. They experiment on, on, on the downtrodden. I'm going to say the downtrodden. You don't mind if I say downtrodden, do you? Okay. So what happens? Oh, it's still, and, and take, I'm sorry, I forgot taking away taking hospitals out of those communities too. Whoa, that was a really. I mean, you've, if, if if people didn't see that one coming, if they didn't see after that happened, if people didn't understand what was happening then, then well, just like what's happening now, right? So you know, people are gen generally sheeples, so they just wait and let something happen. They just react to whatever's happening, and that's what happened. But now we have a situation. Hey. You ain't been through this before. You ain't been through this. Uh, we we ain't been through this before. So what happens? I don't know. Well, I, here's what I do know. When I grew up in that same time period, 
it was interesting because you you didn't have to leave your neighborhood. When I say your neighborhood, your four block area, <laughs> any place in the city, because because everything was there. You know, we had to go a little bit away. Like if if we wanted to go to what they call under the bridge, you know, what I mean, like like, like just Spanish Harlem. There was a, the, the train trestle. Anyway, the, the, there's fish markets under the bridge. Marks under the bridge. There's the the, the uh, Bronx Terminal Market was was happening at that time. They haven't done something else for it now. Anyway, the point is. There are places you can go a little bit out of your neighborhood that would be like literally markets because you was by, you know, transportation areas, you know, where the trucks would get their stuff and go into that, 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 okay? So you really didn't have to leave your neighborhood. That's why the gangs were protecting their neighborhood from all encroachment, <laughs> including, I guess later on they didn't realize, but including, you know, gentrification. But hey, we don't get into that right now, okay? So... Here's what's going to happen. So I'm trying to get to this whole thing just to say what's going to happen. We're going right back down to little neighborhood things. If you can't get it in your neighborhood, that means you have to improve your neighborhood. But there's going to be any money. You know, the, the, the rich, you know, this thing is going to be kind of interesting. Everything's going to depend on what kind of, what your relationship with your neighbors are going to be. Right? It's interesting. Because this thing is, it's, it's, um, I, I, let me speak for, I just want to say something about South Africa for a second, right? Then I'm going to stop, okay? Because I got to call my wife, I call my wife all the time, you know, because she's down in South Africa, I'm here, we can't, I can't go there, she can't come, blah, 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 blah. She don't want to come here, she never wants to come to the States. But down in South Africa now, they, they, they're really serious, you know what I mean? They, the people aren't taking it serious, but the government, they shutting things down. That are, One of the things they shut down was the Shabines. The alcohol. Now, if you know anything about South Africa, in fact, they were they, 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 somehow they were they they became the number one you know alcohol whatever in the in the world. You know they passed they passed, passed the Australians to drinking. That's I don't know how that happened, but they did. Anyway, but they shut down all of, not only the Shabines, they shut down the all the liquor stores that the, the, they call the bottle stores. Tops Tops is a big bottle store that's always associated with uh what's it uh, with uh, whatever that whatever. whatever um, one of those big, 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 big chain, big chain. Every time you have one of those big chains, you have a tops right there. You know, spa, spa. That's what it is. That's P S P A R. It's like it means it's like German for something like bargain. Or, I don't know, some whatever. I forgot what it was. I learned that when I went to. What was it? I was in Zambia. I finally found out what it. Hey, it doesn't matter. It's in a regional grocery store, in a regional whatever. But there's no liquor. That means the people are like, they're not drinking. Wow. And I guess the roads, so it'll be, it's amazing how you can, they can alter their habits just like that. I'm telling you, Af South Africa is a drinking, drinking place. And they, every t every area has their own little shabine, little place to hustle, a little, uh, their courts of this or whatever, 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 they're hustling. And that ain't happening now. It ain't happening. And it's amazing to me. It's truly amazing to me. I'm like, whoa, this is interesting. So all kinds of things have happened. Like, okay, I can tell you one thing. I know I've been too long in this. I'm sorry. I really apologize, but I got to I tell you this. All right? Here's what happened. My wife was telling me, there's these cats in Cape Town. Now, you have to understand, the, the scolies, the, the, the powder potters, the, the gangs, the, 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 gangs, the petty criminals. Let's call them the petty criminals, the powder potters, pe petty criminals. If anything happens, they're on it. Boom, right away. If they can make some money, they make some Money. <laughs> <laughs> so she tells me, she, so we have this thing. I say, no, that's you, you lying. That's not, she said, no, I'm telling you, it was in, I said, no, that she'll say it was in the paper. And I said, no, no, this is, no, it was on the news. I said, ah, no, nah, nah, nah. We go through this back and forth. I know she ain't lying, but I'm just saying, you know, it's, it's, it's a little dance, right? So what they're doing is selling masks at traffic stops. They're selling masks. It's, it's a mask. Right? And the people take a mask that has something in it that basically knocks them out. You know, well, you know, whatever they do to them. And then they steal the steal stuff from them. <laughs> Split. I'm sorry. I'm laughing because any you can predict this kind of stuff. Anybody can predict. You can predict what's going to happen next. You really can. It's just just, just the way it is. If, if the big boys are going to rip you off for whatever, you know, uh, uh, three quarters of this stimulus bill is going to the rich people, right? You can best believe that a little slither, you know, down in the other downtrodden, they're going to rip something off too. So all I'm trying to say is this, like, it's, this thing is going to be Wild West for in a second. It's going to be a Wild West and everything's going to change, including the monetary system and all the rest of that stuff. This is a time where you workers, the people that are supposed to be, you're supposed to be striking right now, not by not helping these rich people. 
Forget the politicians, they're hopeless. You know, all those politicians be voted out. I don't care if you hear Bernie at ASO, whoever, that, 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 they're all sellouts. Come on, you know they are. Come on. Anyway, I'm just saying, me being chief for the Patterson State Train to Tibet at an undisclosed location, it's on. You can sit back. It's going to affect you, but it's on. And if you want the spoils, you got to be there second because you got to get in there first. You got to get in, put your bid in. You got to, you know, you got to put your strike in now. You got to do whatever you got to do now. This is the time because they done struck. The rich people done struck already. They done take the money. They take it. <laughs> so we got to do something. Do something, please. 